Okay, welcome to the Monday, November 6th, 2023 session of the Lake Forest City Council. Will the city clerk please call the roll? Certainly, Honorable Mayor Pack. Here. Alderman Miller? Here. Alderman Waldeck? Present. Alderman Nope? Here. Alderman Powers? Here. Alderman Freshwax? Here. Alderman Gasparian? Here. Alderman Weber? Here. Alderman Walder? Here. Mr. Mayor, you have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, please rise and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, the first item on tonight's agenda is consideration of approval of donation and naming rights agreement in relation to the Forest Park Beach Pathway Project. As a reminder, engineering design and construction timelines for the Forest Park Beach Pathway Project will be on the agenda for the capital budget workshop next week. Before I ask council to take action on the agreement, I have a few comments I'd like to share. The City of Lake Forest has a long history of public-private partnerships that have benefited and improved many amenities in our community, including Deer Path Golf Course, Forest Park, Eloa Farm, Market Square, Gorton Center, and Ragdale. With the generosity of our residents, we have undertaken these projects and restored, enhanced, and preserved these city parks and properties for generations to come. The next big project is construction of the Forest Park Beach Pathway Project. And tonight we have yet another example of philanthropy. The Moore family has come forward as the lead donor to make construction of a new pathway from the top of the bluff down to the beach possible. Like the original boardwalk, the reimagined Forest Park Beach Pathway will make the beach accessible to all and will offer the same magical experience of zigzagging down the bluff while taking in incredible views of Lake Michigan. On behalf of the City Council and the community, thank you for your energy and vision, for your leadership on this project, and for your very generous donation, which will serve as the foundation for this project going forward. Following your lead, others in the community have already stepped up to offer their support. In recognition of your generous contribution, the pathway will be named Rita's Way in honor of Diana's mother, Rita Walton. We look forward to meandering down Rita's Way later this year once the project is complete. At this time, I would ask the City Council to entertain a motion to formally approve the donation and naming rights agreement. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Well, uh, excuse me, roll call vote, please. Aye. Alderman Weber? Aye. Alderman Waldeck? Aye. Alderman Nope? Aye. Alderman Freshwax? Aye. Alderman Gasparian? Aye. Alderman Weber? Aye. Aye. Thank you. The remaining motion carries. At this time, I would like to invite Ms. Diana Moore to step up and offer some comments. I don't really have much to say. I want to say thank you, first of all, for acknowledging us. But uh, what's more important to me is that David and I are both very proud of being able to be a small part of getting this project moving. However, the real heavy lifting has, of course, been done by city staff. And so I would like to say thank you to Sally Swarthout, Chuck Myers, Jason Wicca, and Kathy Cerniak for everything they've done to bring our beautiful boardwalk back. I can't wait to walk on it again. So thank you. Thank you. Again, thank you very much. Next item will be presented by Chief Carl Waldorf. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of City Council. Thank you for your time tonight. We always appreciate you sparing time for us for these promotions. They're important to our uh, honorees, obviously, but also uh, the rest of our people as well. Um, what I'll do is I'll call each new commander up one at a time and tell you a little bit about them while they're coming up. Our first is Commander Tim Gretz.
So Tim joined us last month as our newest detective commander. He spent more than 30 years with the Buffalo Grove Police Department and he has extensive experience in criminal and narcotic investigation and supervision. and defend we solemnly swear to support, and, support defend and defend the constitutions of the United States the constitutions of the United States and the state of Illinois and the state of Illinois and will diligently enforce the laws of the state of Illinois and will diligently enforce the laws of the state of Illinois and the city of Lake Forest and the city of Lake Forest and that I will faithfully execute and I will faithfully execute the duties of police commander the duties of police commander. To the best of my knowledge and ability. To the best of my knowledge and ability. Congratulations. <laughs> We'd like to invite Tim's family up. Our second appointee is Commander Conrad Christensen. Good morning. Yeah, thank you so much for your service. Conrad has been with us for almost 18 years okay. now. He served as a school resource officer and as an investigator and team leader with the Lake County Major Crimes Task Force. He most recently served as a sergeant assigned to day shift. Thank you, Steve. Okay. I, Conrad Christensen. I, Conrad Christensen. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The constitutions of the United States and the state of Illinois. The constitutions of the United States and the state of Illinois. And will diligently enforce the laws of the state of Illinois. And will diligently enforce the laws of the state of Illinois. And the city of Lake Forest. And the city of Lake Forest. And that I will faithfully execute the duties of police commander. And that I will faithfully execute, execute the duties of police commander. To the best of my knowledge and ability. To the best of my knowledge and ability. Congratulations.
Thank you. Our third appointee is Commander Ben Grom. Ben has served with us as a police officer for 17 years. He was the school resource officer at Lake Forest High School and has been an investigator with the state's Internet Crime Against Children Task Force for many years. Most recently, Ben served as sergeant on our afternoon shift. Hi, Ben Grum. Hi, Ben Grum. Do you solemnly swear? Do you solemnly swear that I will support and defend? That I will support and defend the constitutions of the United States and the state of Illinois. The constitutions of the United States and the state of Illinois. And will diligently enforce the laws. And will diligently enforce the laws of the state of Illinois. Of the state of Illinois. And the city of Lake Forest. And the city of Lake Forest. And that I will faithfully execute. The duties of police commander. And I will faithfully execute the duties of police commander. To the best of my knowledge and ability. To the best of my knowledge and ability. Congratulations, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, the next item on the agenda is a resolution of appreciation for retiring employee Mike Whalen. May I have a motion to approve a resolution of appreciation for retiring employee Mike Whalen? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. This will be pre presented by Kathy Cerniak, Director of Development. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for giving me the opportunity to honor Mike Whalen. Mike, join me. We don't have uniforms. We don't have pins. We don't have badges. <laughs> <laughs> but Mike, like many Lake Forest employees, is an unsung hero, out of the limelight, behind the scenes, and... Thank you for this opportunity to recognize and honor him. <clears throat> Whereas Michael P. Whalen joined the city of Lake Forest on August 24th, 1992 as electrical inspector for what was then the building and zoning department. Whereas Mike honorably retired from the city last Friday, November 3rd, 2023, after serving the residents of Lake Forest in various capacities for over 31 years as he progressed through his career, ultimately advancing to the position of the city's lead residential plan reviewer in the community development department. Whereas Mike consistently supported his coworkers, many of whom are here tonight, thank you, teaching, guiding, encouraging, and challenging them. Whereas Mike is valued and respected not only by his colleagues, but also by many architects and contractors for his expertise and more importantly, for his willingness to problem solve collaboratively and creatively. Whereas Mike not only has a vast knowledge of building and life safety codes, but also recognize that codes are not black and white, but instead require thoughtful interpretation 
an application with sensitivity to historic buildings, the unique character of Lake Forest, the expected high quality of construction in the community, and the individual circumstances of each project. And whereas Mike embraced technology and was a leader in ensuring that the community development department pivoted quickly to remote plan <coughs> reviews, inspections, and permit issuance during the pandemic. And whereas Mike has pushed for continuous improvement in the department, streamlining processes, creating efficiencies, and crea increasing effectiveness, all to the benefit of our customers, the built environment, and the overall community. And whereas, and maybe most importantly, Mike made lunchtime special <laughs> with his lengthy list of options for takeout restaurants. He ordered, picked up, and delivered, <coughs> making sure that no one ever went hungry. <laughs> and whereas, Mike, although you and Joanne recently completed your Route 66 journey from Chicago to the end of Santa Monica Pier, there are still miles and miles of open road left for you to explore together, and we wish you safe travels and many wonderful adventures as you ride off into the sunset. And I'll turn the, the rest over to you. be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Lake Forest that, that the City Council on behalf of the entire city organization and the residents of the community hereby expresses its gratitude to Michael P. Whalen for a public service faithfully, diligently, and honorably performed and be it further resolved that this resolution be appropriately inscribed and conveyed to Mike with a copy to be included in the official minutes of the November 6th, 2023 meeting of the Lake Forest City Council. Congratulations. Mike, feel free to say a few words if you'd like. No pressure, you don't have to. <laughs> uh, I don't know, I'm not very good at public speaking, but uh, I want to thank city council and current city council and past city councils for supporting our department and allowing us to, to shine when we needed to. And um, I want to thank all of my coworkers, every one of them who supported me during the years, 31 years. <laughs> Um, I don't know if anybody's here what that when I first started, but um, the, everybody's been great. And I want to thank Kathy for supporting me and encouraging me to be a, a better city employee. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. The next item is comments by city manager uh, thank you mr. mayor and members of city council before I begin my report I will take a minute for a break people are certainly free to stay for the rest of our meeting if you'd like but if people want to uh, depart now to celebrate with all of the uh, honorees tonight that'd be fine
so many people watching on TV. Are you kidding me? <laughs> so many. <laughs> this is how I used to do on Monday nights before you were on the show. Okay. Are we ready? I think we'll begin. Yeah. The uh, manager's report really cleared the room out, so that, that's okay. Um, before tonight's community spotlight, I did want to provide one update to the council and the community following up on an action item from, I believe it was September earlier today, the six-month bank lane um, one-way pilot project in between uh, Deer Path and Illinois. Um, uh, well, officially began today. I want to give um, a special thanks to Kathy Zerniak, both for the planning of it and also on the engagement side with the business community in the surrounding area. I also want to recognize our street supervisor, Matt Brugioni, and his team uh, for the work they did in, in short order, both in getting all the signage installed, um, getting the striping done for the streets, as well as the new parking configuration, angled parking configuration. So as had been discussed with the council, we'll take the, six, the next six months to gather uh, feedback, both from the business community, from residents. We want to hear people's experience, uh, both good and bad, uh, both from a, from a safety perspective, aesthetic perspective, uh, from a parking perspective, and um, certainly at a staff level, we'll continue to monitor any accident or incident data as well as traffic impacts, but we're excited to see uh, how this works and we'll look forward to reporting back to the council in the months ahead. In the meantime, uh, Dana Olson and her team, I know, have um, been pretty heavy in communicating the news out to the community on various platforms so hopefully we'll minimize uh, the impacts of people who've been used to driving northbound there and <laughs> not noticing all the signage if, if that's possible but um, but again wanted to just make sure that the council and community were aware that uh, that that began earlier today have we had our first complaint yeah. oh, no <laughs> very good well, we're well on our way now that's right <coughs> Um, <laughs> for tonight's community spotlight, I'm uh, thrilled to uh, introduce Reading Power, which is a local asset that provides individualized, high dosage, one-on-one, -on -one, in-person tutoring during the school day for children uh, aged preschool, I believe, up to, to second grade. Reading Power does this by partnering with schools, needing supplemental literacy support where needs exceed resources. And here to tell more of that story is the CEO of Reading Power, Lisa Bolzoni. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for having us. Um, well, me representing the organization this evening. Obviously, it was a special night, and they all could not wait to leave and um, go grab a beer and celebrate, I guess. But um, <laughs> I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you about Reading Power. As we have been in um, our office, when we started having an office, has been in um, Lake Forest or Lake Bluff. Um, this is our 20th 20th anniversary year so we have been a member of the Lake Forest community um, and the majority of our board members for many years were Lake Forest and Lake Bluff residents and including our current board but um, we are diversifying a little bit outside of the geographic area but we've been very lucky to call this home and um, just joined the chamber recently so we're very excited um, we've done a lot of growing in the past particularly in the past five to six years so I'm excited to share what we do where we do it and 
and um, I did bring resources, and I don't know if I should just leave some on the back table, but information about what we do if there's people who are interested in tutoring or donating. We have um, lots of things that I can leave behind. So, um, low literacy is a national health crisis. Um, recently, I had the honor of meeting with um, British Robinson, who was the CEO and chairman of the Barbara Bush Family Literacy Foundation. She came to speak at the Gorton Center, and she talked about the fact that of the million people who died of COVID, 10 to 20% died because they could not read the protocols. To me, that's a national health crisis. If you can't read the directions for how to protect yourself, to keep yourself safe, or to even follow the prescription bottles that could keep you safe from, um, from any health issues that might arise. Um, so we know that it is not just a matter of being able to read for enjoyment, but it's also for living and having a, a healthy and life filled with um, wellness. Here is a short video um, that we recently were able to um, have made. Uh, uh, there should be a link to the video in there, isn't there? Oh. There was a lot, oh, there was a link in my PowerPoint, but you can go on our website and see the Introduction to Reading Power. It's a fabulous video. We were very fortunate to get um, a grant from the Reichert Family Foundation, and we were able to create some tutoring videos as well as some um, training videos for our tutors. So um, I'll skip to the next page, but we do have that information on our website. Um, our mission is to accelerate children's literacy, learning, and develop a love of reading and writing, and we envision a world where all children have a strong literacy foundation to support that lifelong learning. We just completed a three-year strategic planning process and are putting that into action now. So as um, you mentioned before, what sets us apart from other organizations and other ways that people try to combat low literacy rates is through high dosage one-to-one -one tutoring that happens during the school day in the schools. So children view us as a part of their school day and that's really important because after school, children, students are tired, they've had a lot to do, and students who struggle really have a hard time um, you know, putting so much attention and focus after school. So during the school day really is a great way for us to meet the needs of those students. We work in collaboration with the schools, the um, administrators, and the teachers. Um, we target students below the 25th percentile in literacy, and we target school districts or schools where 50% of the students are below the 50th percentile. They also um, tend to be in a high minority area. We've been in North Chicago for 20 years. We are also in um, Waukegan, Palatine, Zion, and um, North Chicago, Zion, Waukegan, Palatine, and Wheeling. So um, we've been really lucky that we now have school districts that are coming to us. In the beginning, it was strictly in North Chicago. We were in three schools. And then um, I think recognition for the success we have with students is starting to make its way through, and we have expanded into Cook County this year. So this year, we have approximately 350 tutors, and we are seeing over 600 students in all five districts. And there are locations. Um, we do see preschool. We're at Green Bay um, Preschool in North Chicago. We are also in um, Robbie Lightfoot Preschool in Waukegan. And in those two instances, um, we're a universal intervention. We go in and see all students. But in our kindergarten through second grade student, we do target students and work with them through the year. So if I am a student, I might see five different tutors during the week, a Monday, a Tuesday, a Wednesday, Thursday, and a Friday tutor, but I see those same five tutors all year long. So there is a relationship built and a solid foundation of trust so the children feel that they can take risks, make mistakes, and move on and learn from those. 
last year um, we were really lucky and 70% of our students met grade level expectations and increased an average of five reading levels. So we were really, really successful. And um, all of the reports that have come out since COVID have shown that um, high dosage tutoring is the main way to make an impact on student learning. It's really that one-to-one. -one. And as a classroom teacher, having had been one for 10 years and a principal, I can tell you that no teacher can spend 40 minutes with each child in their classroom every day. So we, we, me, we, we meet with the students um, in some classrooms. We have our own dedicated space. In some rooms, we might see 10 students at a time. And in others, we might see 15. And others, we might see eight. We see them all at a time. And we see three sessions in the morning and three in the afternoon. So we are really trying to maximize what a school cannot. And over the years, you can see, I mean, over last year, you can see the incredible growth that the students have in kindergarten. Um, their scores were at 48, and you know they are obviously, at the end of the year, have made remarkable growth, as well as our first grade. And so kindergarten, that refers to our raw score. In first and second grade, that refers to the average number of words per minute a child is reading. In the beginning of first grade, the average of all of our first graders were reading nine words in a minute. At the end of the year, they were reading 57. So at the end of first grade, the 50th percentile is 60 words per minute. So we're working with students in the beginning of the year who are falling between 0 and 15, and at the end of the year, getting them to the 50th percentile. In second grade, it's a little harder. A second grader um, needs to be reading 100 words per minute at the end of second grade to be considered reading at the 50th percentile. So our students, while making incredible growth, are still a little ways from the 50th percentile, but they're certainly in the grade level average. So literacy does transform lives. We've been very lucky to be able to stay in contact with some of the students that we've worked with. On the left up there, that is Marco, and he was a student of ours in Zion, and his tutor um, was a board member and still is a board member, and she's met with him and mentored him and his family throughout the years, and he is now an honor student in Zion Benton High School. So he's still, and he'll be a speaker at our 20th anniversary celebration at um, in April. Um, to talk about how reading power has impacted his life. On the right, that's Justin Hartley. He was also a um, student of ours. So we had him at one of the Learn Charter schools. He um, went on, he spoke at our 15th anniversary, and he was just graduating high school, and he was on his way to Tulane University. So as you can see, in one year, um, we provided 16,000 one-to-one tutoring sessions. 70% of our students met our grade level expectations. 21,000 um, volunteering hours in a year. And since 2003, we've seen 4,900 students. And last year we had 275, but this year we recruited another 100 volunteers over the summer to meet our expansion. Um, the place to go is a farmer's market if you would like to recruit tutors for anything because we have recruited 120 volunteers this year and last year from farmer's markets. Wow. Yeah, it's they're all over, so it's been great. So obviously, you know, we call it doers and dollars. We need doers and we need dollars in order to run our program. So um, like I said, I'll leave some information behind for any of you who are interested in learning more about Reading Power. I'm sure you know members of our board, if you look on our website, as many of them are lifelong Lake Forest and Lake Bluff residents. Um, it was started, and I'll just give you a tiny bit because I know you're very busy, but um, we, um, began at the First Presbyterian Church in Lake Forest, Reverend Butcher and Mary Jane Hender, who are, were our founders, and they had a strong uh, passion for literacy and looking at how close Lake Bluff is to North Chicago. You know, what separates them is Shore Acres. And they thought, you know, it's a five minute drive from my home and there's more that I need to do. And that's what started us being in North Chicago for so many years. So. We're grateful again. Uh, thank you for letting me attend and to present to you information about reading power. And I'm happy to answer any questions. But I do have to say, I didn't think I'd know anybody here, but Dr. Goshgarian, you're my daughter's orthodontist about <laughs> 12 or 15 years ago. So <laughs> and her teeth look great. So. Good job. Excellent. On the right.
there any questions? All right, well, thank you. Should I leave anything back there? Is that okay? Okay, and then, you know, if there's anything that you want to, um, if you, I, you have my email. So if there's anything else, um, we'd be happy to provide more information for you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, very you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lisa. And I'll make sure we send that video link to the council yeah. as well. Oh, you know what? I'll send it a link to Joni and Rick and just get it. Then. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. And that concludes my report for this evening. Thank you. Uh, the next item is opportunity for citizens to address the city council. Is there anyone who would like to address the council at this time? Seeing none, the next item is committee reports. Uh, the audit committee report will be presented by Ty Magnuson, audit committee member. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> we have quite a fewer number now. Uh, glad it wasn't me that got them all out of here. But <laughs> uh, at any rate, I'm Ty Magnuson. I've been a resident here in Lake Forest for, I think, 37 years now. Uh, and I've uh, really enjoyed my time here. Uh, I've been involved in a couple of things along the way. Um, did some stuff with Parks and Rec. Uh, but for almost now six years, I've been on the audit committee, and I have enjoyed it uh, a lot because I've learned more about Lake Forest than I ever knew in the prior 31 years. Uh, with that, um, what we're going to cover real quickly is what we do, who we are, financial reporting achievements, the Baker Tilly audit opinion, just some real brief numbers on the financials and a little bit of feedback and any questions. So uh, the Audit Committee serves as the oversight body for the City Council during the preparation of the annual report and included in the agenda was the comprehensive hmm? financial report that's something like 220 pages. I'm sure all of you read it, um, but um, the auditor uh, is not responsible for uh, an opinion on all of it, but the major financials, the standard financial reports. But uh, there's a lot of good information there for anybody. <laughs> uh, I've gotten to, uh, uh, I've gotten more interested in it as, as the years have passed on the audit committee. And uh, I'm sure there are other people that get into the minutia, but it, it's, there's a lot of information there. Um, we do any kind of independent reviews that city council and the mayor may ask. Uh, we meet four times a year. Um, one of the things that we instituted starting last January is a cybersecurity review. Um, there's obviously more importance uh, on that topic and uh, we think it's uh, good to know where we're at and do we need to do more. Um, I think I can confidently say that I, we're as in good a shape as we can be, but you never know, and so we just want to stay on top of it. Um, we also uh, review or solicit RFPs for the external auditors, and we go through that whole selection process and come up with, uh, <coughs> you know, whomever it may be. Uh, how long will you, have we been with Baker and Tilly? Is they, are they in their fifth year? Anyway, we're close to, I think it's next year we're going to go out mm -hmm. and solicit uh, RFPs for a new auditor. Um, uh, and then uh, probably the most enjoyable and equally important aspect of our job is to review the financial statements of the various foundations. That uh, includes the senior uh, group, Croya, Police, Parks and Rec, Ragdale, and, and Gorton. Um, one of the things uh, that we've found, well, we not only go through the numbers with them, but we also talk about their business and what's working, what's not working, and can they improve it. Um, for the most part, we can say that all the foundations are in very good order. Um, but one of the things we want to do as an audit committee is improve the process for a standardized foundation financial report and we're in the process of doing that. 
So who are we? Well, <coughs> it's myself, Mark Dillon, and Fritz Hirsch on the audit committee currently. <laughs> we have two vacancies uh, that's being worked on and hopefully it'll get filled here shortly. Then we have the finance department. We've got uh, Elizabeth over here, uh, Diane Hall, Mark Kurgers, Jimmy Scott, Sarah Hartnett, Claudia Austin, Mary jo Joseph. I want to call those individuals out because uh, frankly, they do a fantastic job, and you'll see why in another slide or two, but uh, hats off to all of them. And then uh, sitting in the meetings occasionally are also are the mayor, finance chair, and the city manager. And of course, Baker Tilly is in the fold as well. So here's where our hats off to the financial uh, group at the city. Uh, 44th consecutive year for Certificate of Achievement Financial Reporting, uh, second year for the popular annual financial report, which has just come up, and then the budget uh, award, uh, eighth time, and we quote, unquote, have the triple crown of the GFOA, and you can see down at the bottom, it's sort of hard to see, but there's less than 350 out of 85,000 that achieved this, so that's hats off to the uh, finance group. Now the important thing here is, what was the audit opinion? Well, uh, it, it's a clean audit. It has been that way for several years now. Uh, no significant deficiencies or material weaknesses. It was done on, uh, on budget on time. Uh, we had great staff participation by the city finance team. Uh, typically, Diane Hall has been the lead person, but uh, as a means to expand and improve uh, the process and working with the team in total, um, Mark Kurgis and Jimmy Scott uh, did it under Diane's tutelage this year, so um, that worked out really well. Um, they learned a lot, and Baker Tilly was totally happy with the outcome. Uh, we had no management letter comments, and um, <clears throat> this has uh, been the situation for eight years now. Um, sort of hard to read the schedule. So bottom line is um, we have a net position of about a quarter billion dollars. Um, it changed by about 10 mil million from 22 to 23. Uh, we got a cash influx due to the bond proceeds right at the end of the fiscal year. Um, liabilities increased a bit, and some of that is due to the new debt and then also uh, pension adjustments. This is a little bit different view of the net position from a revenues and expense. Our interest revenue is up. Uh, 3.7 million this year, and that's interest rates have gone up. Uh, we have a fair amount of cash. That cash sits in the bank, and we get a very good return. I think it was like a little bit over 5% in the month of uh, September. Um, however, we had offsets, and one of the big ones was a pension adjustment, and um, the IMF, IMRF. Uh, Illinois Municipal uh, Retirement. Retirement Fund um, because of the market, the returns were way down and that caused a charge uh, this year. The police and fire, um, their percent funding sort of stayed the same year on and year on. Um, here we have a pie chart of the revenues just to just show you you probably know this anyways, property taxes represent about half of the revenue and then charge for services is 20%. Um, the city of Lake Forest uh, represents about 25% of the total property tax for any homeowner. Um, the bulk of the property tax goes to the schools at about 50%. And a cut of the expenses, 
the big ones are public <coughs> safety, general admin, and uh, the culture and recreation, parks and recs, et cetera. Um, and just as a note, uh, personnel co costs are really about 72% of, of our expenses. So it's, it's a people cost, and that's why we have our pensions. <laughs> um, and then uh, lastly, in terms of the numbers, we've got a, a quarter of a billion in, in assets. Um, they've stayed relatively flat for the year. We've we brought on the Burr Oak Storm sewer, but it was offset by depreciation. But um, this is what <laughs> what we're all here for, is maintaining these assets in, in good working order, which I think the city has done well. And then <clears throat> lastly, um, this is what I call a feedback frame, and it's <coughs> what's working, what's not working, what's missing, what's possible. It's a good way to just sort of recap things as well as examine um, <coughs> problems. But you can see we're loaded on the what's working. Moody's AAA, clean audit, great financial reporting conditions, the city ERP system's working greatly, really facilitates the audit process. City finance team is in good order. Uh, what's not working is really not much. Uh, we're going to look for more opportunities. What's missing, we need a couple of new members, <laughs> uh, and that's coming. And we're working on the standard template for foundation financial reporting. And then what's possible is anything that you here want us to do, we're ready and available. So uh, that just sort of leads to questions. <coughs> That's it. Are there questions for Mr. Magnuson? Fascinating stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I, did someone pay you to say that? <laughs> well, Ty, I just want to thank you for your service. I had the pleasure to be in, I think, the last audit meeting. And it's a lot of work. And it's, again, it's amazing testament to our city and our volunteers. You, really, you guys really get into the details on the city finances as well. And I applaud you for the command of those, but then also into all the different foundation. And right. so th but thank you so much yeah, yeah. for well, keeping I, an eye on everything and just your service. Oh, well, appreciate it. Uh, you know, we do it as a collective team, so it, it works out real well. And the cavalry is coming. The cavalry is coming. <laughs> all righty, thank you very much. The uh, next item, oh, uh, um, this is an opportunity for public comment on the audit committee report. Appears to be none. Uh, so, council action. I'd like a motion to acknowledge receipt of the audit report for the fiscal year ended April 30th. So moved. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. The next item is items for omnibus vote consideration, and there's a few. Um, if anyone would like to pull one of these out, please let me know, and we can take it separately. Uh, at the end of uh, the item. Item one, approval of the October 16th, 2023 City Council meeting minutes. Number two, approval of the check register for the period of September 23rd through October 27th, 2023. Number three, consideration of requests to waive the fidelity bond requirement in connection with holding a raffle in the City of Lake Forest for the Church of St. Mary School of St. Mary, and Lake Forest College Athletics. Number four, determination of a non-binding estimate of the amount of revenue to be generated from property taxes for the 2023 calendar year and establishment of December 4th, 2023 as a public hearing date, if required, in accordance with the Truth in Taxation statute. Number five, approval of health insurance contract renewals for calendar year 2024. Number six, approval of the FY24 personnel policies and practices and administrative directives changes. Number seven, approval of a service contract to Libertyville Tile and Carpet for the Volweiler Hall Carpet and Flooring Replacement Project in the amount of 
$477 to include a project contingency in the amount of $5,000 for a grand total amount of $45,477. Number eight, approval to authorize the city manager to award a contract for tree pruning to fiscal year 2024 to advance tree care for an amount not to exceed $70,000. Number nine, consideration of an ordinance approving a recommendation from the Building Review Board. First reading and if desired by the City Council, final approval. And number 10, consideration of an ordinance approving a recommendation from the Zoning Board of Appeals for 1291 Elm Tree Road. First reading and if desired by the City Council, final approval. Are there any items that the Council would like to have removed or taken separately? That being so, um, I would like to ask for a motion to approve the 10 omnibus items as presented. So moved. Seconded. Okay, may we have a roll call vote? Alderman Dovitz? Aye. Alderman Waldeck? Aye. Alderman Notes? Aye. Alderman Powers? Aye. Alderman Freshlack? Aye. Alderman Gashkarian? Aye. Alderman Weber? Aye. Alderman Walder? Aye. Eight yeas, zero nays, motion carries. Excellent. The next item on the agenda is old business, of which we have none this evening. Uh, the next item is new business. This will be presented by Catherine Cerniak, Director of Community Development. She will present consideration of a recommendation from the Plan Commission in support of a special use permit for Toco Simple Fresh Italian, a restaurant proposed in Westwood Center, 950 Northwestern Avenue. If desired by the City Council, waive first reading and grant final approval of the ordinance. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the Council. This could have been on your omnibus agenda, but it seemed appropriate to celebrate yet another new restaurant and, and take just a few minutes to talk about it. Um, we have added uh, Toco at the bottom of this list, uh, anticipating your approval, so the list continues to grow. Um, there are discussions, ongoing discussions with a few more restaurants as well. Toco is proposed in Westwood Square, although I think we're calling it Westwood Court now, uh, located on the southwest corner of Woodland and Western Avenue. It's a development that just a few years ago was in disrepair. Um, we did have a local family purchase and do significant improvements both inside the, the building and outside. Uh, TOCO is proposed to be located just to the north of Duffer's Pub. Um, so it's in the space, some of you may remember the space previously occupied by King Ma um, and the space behind it that was occupied by Michael's Barbershop, mm -hmm. which has moved across the courtyard. Um, the space uh, wasn't quite as big as uh, Mr. Bruno Abati was hoping for. Um, he was looking for 3,000 square feet of space, but we were able to work with him, be creative in working with the space, um, and also uh, seasonally incorporating the outdoor, outdoor courtyard to uh, convince him um, with uh, some help from the mayor, mayor to come to Lake Forest. He knows that many of his customers currently who go to Toco in Winnetka live in Lake Forest. So um, he did, he's not here tonight, uh, but he did attend the plan commission meeting and provided a very colorful history of um, how he came to this country and how he started uh, in the restaurant business. So he will be a very entertaining um, individual to uh, operate a restaurant in Lake Forest. Uh, Plan Commission, as they always do, uh, considered various aspects. Uh, recognizing this use, this space used to be used for a restaurant, that other restaurants are successfully operating in this location, uh, that this building has um, underground parking spaces as well as on-site parking and is within easy walking distance of the public parking lots on the east side of McKinley Road. Uh, Early on uh, at this location, uh, generally in this development, Burger King was located there. Some of you may remember, we used to get a number of complaints, but with the new owners, really, um, they worked to control noise and hours and activity, and I'll knock on wood, but we have not received complaints uh, since the opening of Duffer's, and the restaurants in this locale really seem to be 
working uh, and co coexisting very well with the surrounding neighbors. Uh, this is before the city council and was before the plan commission because it is a restaurant located within 150 feet of a residential zoning district. Restaurants that meet that criteria require a special use permit. Restaurants that are located <coughs> further away from residential zoning districts do not require a special use permit and can simply uh, move forward with opening. Uh, the plan commission in a four to zero vote unit uh, enthusiastically recommended approval of the restaurant and welcomed Mr. Abate to Lake Forest. If you choose to do so, it would be appropriate to waive first reading of the ordinance before you and grant final approval of Toco, a restaurant within 150 feet of a residential zoning district. It's subject to a number of conditions uh, which are detailed in your ordinance um, and which are consistent with the conditions that apply to other residences and other restaurants within that same development. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, is there any interested public comment on this matter? Hearing none, how about city council? Any questions? I do. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Kathy, a couple questions. One, has this building ever housed four restaurants before that were um, exciting places to be? I don't believe so. Okay, so um, my question then is just to touch on, which I'm sure um, has been commented, but employee parking, where will their employees be parking? There is a condition in your ordinance, I can't recite it uh, word for word, but there is a requirement that employees park off site. Um, they cannot, there's also a prohibition. One of the conditions prohibit parking, prohibits parking within the residential neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. So uh, employees are required to park on the other side of the railroad tracks. And um, a number of years ago, I think when um, the grill on Laurel first went in, our public works department uh, increased the light under the Woodland Road underpass and improved some of the sidewalk connections. So it really, this is the, the perfect location. Again, it has underground parking, it has on-site parking, it has Western Avenue parking, um, after hours perhaps parking in the jewel lot, um, but employees are required to park off-site and is a, it is the obligation of not only the business owner but the property owner to see that that happens. And are they anticipating the use of valet parking? And yes. again, I'm just looking at, are they gonna have spots that they need to block off and maybe just touch on that like we had up the street? And the plan commission did discuss that. We agreed that we would work with all the restaurants in that uh, facility, in that development, to identify whether we need 15 minute pickup spaces. Uh, Toco will not have its own delivery, but we do know there are delivery companies. Um, whether we need to block off spaces for valet. We did add signage up by Sophia Steak. So it's really a continuous discussion. Uh, we're in communication with the police department, with the restaurants, um, and we're really monitoring how the sites work. But it, it is that balance um, between having vitality and having activity and not being able to come in and park directly in front of the business that you wanna go to. Well, I just want to commend you and, and the rest of the city staff and working with the businesses to come in to bring this to fruition because, as you said, it's really important to have these driving factors for our residents to stay and spend their dollars here and not have to drive somewhere else. Thank you. Are there other questions? Okay. Uh, I don't see anything about a noise limit or hours for noise. You may remember that might have been earlier this year, the council did approve a code amendment that allows outdoor speakers under certain conditions. It regulates the size of the speakers, it regulates the volume. Again, I can't recite it off the top of my head, but it, but it does have specific de decibel level. We do have um, a, a monitor that we can take out. But again, I will say we have not received complaints. Um, And it is, again, that balance between activity, vitality, and peace and quiet. And it's, it's an issue that we're aware of. And we'll, we, again, I, I think that we work very cooperatively with the business owners. And um, 
I think there's a benefit to the fact that the Duffer's door is open on Western Avenue. And there is that transition area between th those who choose to live immediately adjacent to the Central Business District certainly have some benefits. They, they can walk instead of drive to now a variety of restaurants. Um, so it, it, it's tricky, but we're certainly aware of it. It's very difficult to say that all noise needs to stop. I know our liquor licenses, and I look to the to to Biddy Boyer, uh, our liquor license. They end at midnight. Okay. Is license for Choco? Uh, you you have not yet seen the license for Choco. We're going to get a little bit closer okay. before we bring the li liquor license. Um, the proposed hours um, till ten are till ten okay. here. Um, the benefit of TOCO will have is that they will have the internal courtyard in that development, so so it is really muffled. Um, if if noise becomes an issue, we'll I'm confident that we'll address it. Are there other questions? Okay, I have one question. Are they planning on having essentially garage doors on the face, similar to Duffer's, or no? Undecided. We've, we've talked to Mr. Abate about that. Um, he's pondering whether that really is the uh, character of the restaurant that he wants. He, he has strong opinions and some, I, I think the space will be very exciting. Very good. All right, well thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, so I would like uh, for a motion to waive first reading and grant final approval of so an ordinance. Can I finish? Of an ordinance <coughs> approving a special use permit for TOCO at Westwood Center, 950 Northwestern Avenue, in accordance with the Plan Commission's recommendation. So moved. Second. Okay, roll call vote, please. <coughs> Alderman Waldeck. Aye. Alderman Mills. Aye. Alderman Powers. Aye. Alderman Kreschlein. Aye. Alderman Gashkarian. An enthusiastic aye. Aye. Alderman Walder. Aye. Alderman Novick. Aye. Eight yeas, zero nay. Motion carries. Excellent. The next item, additional items for discussion or comments by city council members. Are there any comments? Mayor, I have just one comment. You know, Kathy, you showed all the restaurants up there earlier. Um, with your permission, Mayor, I think it would be kind of fun little self-monitoring with city council. Could you send us the names of all those restaurants and check off and see which ones the aldermen have gone to? <laughs> I think it'd be kind of fun. Mm -hmm. And That's maybe if you haven't, possibly encourage you to try those. I agree with Alderman Weber. Let's support our local businesses. Excellent. Good idea. Happy to share the list. All right. Um, anything and else? I had one item that I forgot to mention in my manager's report, just a reminder to the city council and the community that the annual finance committee capital budget workshop is scheduled for next Monday night at Dickinson Hall. Unlike city council meetings, a reminder that the workshop begins at 5 p.m. So 5 p.m. next Monday, Dickinson Hall. Okay. I have one question. So I asked for a vote on the resolution before we actually read it. Is that still valid, our vote? Okay, presumably all the aldermen had already read it because they read everything in their packages, but okay, very good. Um, if there's nothing else, may I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Excellent. Yeah, thank you. See you guys